So what we need to do next is refit our cutting head. So first of all, we're going to wipe, wipe the cutting head plate nice and clean. Like so. Gonna put a bit more WD-40 on it just to let it soak into the metal. And wipe that around. We're not gonna wipe it dry. And we're not gonna leave it wet. Like so. Then we get our cutting head that we've serviced and prepared earlier. We're gonna wipe it as well. Okay, and then what we're going to do is reassemble it. So when we put our cutting head on, we have to make sure that we slide it all the way back into the dovetail so that it's nice and square and flat. Otherwise, we're not going to get a nice straight cut. So that gets retained with our retaining bolt. And it gets tightened up with the T-handle, which is supplied with the machine if you got it. So this obviously depends on the car that you're machining. So for now, we're just going to assemble it in the middle of the slide like so. We're not going to go super tight on this bolt now because this is something that you always check during configuration. Like so. There's a few minor things now I'm going to service on the machine and show you how to do that. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to remove the hub adapter clamp bolt out of the machine. We're going to clean the mounting surface or where the hub adapters mount just so that we get a nice flush mount because that's going to affect the um, the integrity of the mount and also it's going to make it harder to adjust our run out. So first of all we're going to take our hub adapter clamp bolt out of the machine so we need to undo the, the knob. Now it's just locked against the shaft against this lock nut. I've already loosened it just unlock it like so, <clears throat> undo the knob, and then take the loose nut off, and the washer, and the bolt just slides straight out. Okay, so we're going to reassemble that so we don't lose any parts. You can see the buildup of dirt and debris on the on the pin here. We're going to clean all that up. It's going to be good as new. Okay, so first of all, what we need to do is back off any of the run-out adjustment screws. So that they're not proud of the plate. Like so. Now we're going to clean the plate. So once again, I'm going to start with my dry soft brush. And go all around the housing and the plate. Good. <clears throat> Next I'm just going to hit it with a steel brush. Now if we need to rotate this, while we're cleaning it, what we do is just use the knob on the back of the motor by hand and that will rotate the whole assembly. Now I'm going to hit it with a bit of steel wool just to give it a shine up. And around the edge like that, that's going to make our numbers show up too from our run-out adjustment screws. Now once again, just with the dry brush. Okay, beautiful. Now before we put the bolt back in, I'm just going to take the front housing off. We're going to inspect the drive belts and so forth, just see their, what they're like. Give it a full check and we're almost done. So a Phillips screwdriver is your friend here.
Okay, two long, one short, pretty easy to remember. And our cover is going to come off. And we're going to see the two drive belts. <clears throat> it's not too much dirt and debris in there, but I'm still going to give it just a, a really basic brush with my soft brush. Just to make sure there's no big chunks of debris that are going to get caught in our belt or anything. We can check the condition of them as well. There's no tensioners on the belt, so they're just a, a one-time uh, one use belt. Once they're stretched, which they're obviously not supposed to because they're a tooth belt, they need replacing. So they're obviously just a, they're not a stretch fit, but they're just a fixed fit belt. Just give them a brush, check for any chunks out of the belt or missing teeth. If you want to rotate it again, you use the knob on the back of the motor. It's geared down so that back drive belt's going to take a long time to go all the way around. Now we have part numbers on these belts. I'm going to read them out in case you ever need to replace them. The short belt, the primary belt, is labelled 148XL. And the secondary belt or the long belt is called 188XL. It also has a number of 179MC. I don't know if you can buy an aftermarket tooth belt like this. You probably can. But the part numbers are also listed in the ProCut owner's manual, which is downloadable on the internet. Okay, I'm satisfied that all that's in working order. <clears throat> so I'm also going to clean the inside of the outside cover, like so, and it's ready to refit back on. I'm not going to put any lubricant or anything on these little screws or anything, just to hold this plastic cover on. They don't need to be tight, or well, they don't need to be wrench tight. Don't want anything dripping under the belts or anything like that. I'm going to put a flat washer on this one because it's this part of the housing is very prone to flexing and cracking. Just to give it a little bit of extra support and obviously we're not going to over tighten it. So we just want to position so that it doesn't rub or foul on anything. And I'm just going to leave those just that tight for now until we put the bolt through with the knob, make sure the knob's in the center. So what I'm going to do now is just clean the shaft of the retaining pin where our adapter goes onto the lathe. Just going to give it a rub with uh, steel wool. Get rid of any of that built up gunk. <clears throat> Gonna take it out of the knob because we have to take it off to put it through the machine, anyways. Give it the same treatment at this end. And we're gonna wire brush the threads. Like so. Gonna wipe it with a rag and then spray a bit of WD 40 on the rag and just just wipe it. Once again, I don't want it dripping down into the internals of the machine, but I don't want my pin to rust. So that's it. <clears throat> back through the machine from the back end, like so. Then goes the flat washer and the lock nut and then the knob. And we'll just adjust this so that when it pushes all the way through, we we'll get to the thread. 
Now when it pushes this way, the knob doesn't foul on the stand. Like that. That'll do fine. And we just lock that one up against the other. Like that. And that's it. <coughs> now we're just going to finally adjust the cover. Just tighten them. Just, just firm. Any plastic. That's it. So that's basically our whole machine has been serviced and checked and reassembled, ready to put it to good use. Okay, thank you.